that is extremely bullish for the bitcoin ecosystem you know long term sort of this cycle all time high anywhere between you know, i think it's going to be somewhere close to a million us dollars for one bitcoin on the upside that's more important mine. thing is that the major economies around the world are going to print even more money between now and say the next 18 to 24 months. Continue. I think Obviously, we've slowed down a bit, and now we're entering the summer, the Northern Hemispheric summer, where things slow down, volatility declines, and we're going to get a choppy range bond market. But for those people who have fiat and extra cash that want to allocate to crypto, this is the perfect opportunity to there do so. There will be a downturn in, in the price of Bitcoin at some point. But I think that our expectations need to realign with the fact that there's going to be even Welcome more. back to Crypto Insights. In this video, we will bring you the highlights from Arthur Hayes' recent discussion on Cointelegraph. As always, time is money, so don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on the latest developments in the crypto space. So the difference between this cycle and all the previous ones is the geopolitical and macroeconomic situation of every other major power. And that is we are in the midst of changing the world order. I don't know what that new world order will be, but the people who who make money off of the old world, old water don't want it to change. And therefore, they're going to print more money than we've ever seen in human history to try to forestall that change. The change will still happen. Um, they will still get swept aside by the tides of history. But in, in its wake, we have Bitcoin and that allows us to escape. So end of the year, I think we're going to be between seventy dollars to $100,000 on the price of Bitcoin in 2024. My you know, long-term sort of this cycle all-time high, anywhere between, you know, I think it's going to be somewhere close to a million US dollars for one Bitcoin on the upside. That's my prediction. I hope we get there. Um, whether we, if we get even close, that'll be good. The previous halvings and anywhere between four to 18 months later, you get uh, a new all-time high. The more important thing is that the major economies around the world are going to print even more money between now and say the next 18 to 24 months. I think the big event that crypto investors need to very, follow very closely is the upcoming US presidential election. Not because the US is important just because it's the US, but more so it's the global empire, its financial policy influences what the Chinese, the Japanese, the Europeans all do. And so if you have an easing of monetary policy because um, Janet Yellen, U.S. Treasury Secretary, and Jerome Powell, uh, the Fed president, are doing everything they can to make sure that Joe Biden gets reelected, and that basically means how do I reduce the cost of government borrowing so that him and his Democratic Party can hand out more goodies to the electorate and get reelected? That's what's going to happen between now and the end of the year. When you control the um, the purse of the government, it's very easy to do so by printing money, borrowing it, and handing it out to people in various forms. The bull market is still going to continue. Obviously, we've slowed down a bit, and now we're entering the summer, the northern hemispheric summer, where things slow down, volatility declines, and we're going to get a choppy range bond market. But for those people who have fiat and extra cash that want to allocate to crypto, this is the perfect opportunity to do so. Capture all the things that are used as credit money in the economy. And every time there's a new problem, the elites in charge come up with a new way to confuse people about how they're going to print money. So maybe it's M2, maybe it's broad banking reserves, maybe it's the reserves held at the central bank. It depends on every single economy and how they want to print money. But at the end of the day, the goal is how do I stuff more credit money through the economy without getting a negative reaction from the populace being like, oh, what's all this inflation? I'm going to blame the people in charge. So yes, M2 is a good measure. And at sometimes it works and then sometimes it's flat, but it's been flat you know, for a while, but you still see gold and crypto doing very well. You still see major tech indices at all the new time highs. So there is an ample liquidity. It's increasing. It just not might be in the indices that people are familiar with from how it operated in the past. I go back to the first thing I said was that the thing that got us from 2009 to 2024 in that massive central bank printing, government spending, that's going to continue. Now, the addition of the ETF is very important because now instead of just, you know, Muppets like us who aren't, you know, fiduciaries or institutional investors who are buying these things, we now have an institutional investor class who are saying the same thing. You have all these luminaries of the financial services industry in the West 
saying the same thing that I'm saying, which is the government spending by Western democratic governments and I'll add China in there as well is unsustainable at these levels. And they're questioning whether or not owning a domestically risk-free domestic currency bond is a good idea for a fiduciary. Now, if that belief holds, then these institutions can now express that view through a BlackRock or Fidelity or pick your large fund managers, Bitcoin ETF. They don't have to custody it. They don't have to worry about who they bought it from. They're buying it from you know, the establishment itself. And so they can express this negative view on the sovereign bond market directly into the best performing asset in human history over the last 15 years. So while the growth in AUM might have slowed, the marketing machine of TradFi is just getting started. These are the most successful products ever for BlackRock and Fidelity and the rest of these fund managers. Do you think they're just going to stop after three months? Of course not. They're going to be advertising in all the mainstream financial press. This is a long game. So I think people are underestimating the stickiness of these flows. That doesn't mean that we're entering into, you know, a Kyle Davies and Suju super cycle. That's complete bullshit. There will be a downturn in, in the price of Bitcoin at some point. But I think that our expectations need to realign with the fact that there's going to be even more money printed by the major economic blocks between now and the next bear market. Probably you're going to start seeing some sort of positive real rate and define the real rate as your 10-year government bond minus nominal GDP. Or maybe there's going to be some major global conflict and you know a reordering of, of the, the economic and both political situation between the major powers. That sort of will culminate in obviously some orgy of money printing. And after that, our expectations might just get ahead of us. And that probably is a signal that it's time to you know come down in price. Do I have a specific thing I'm looking for? No, it's more it's more of a feeling. The fact that we're, you know, we just passed 70,000, now we're bound at, well, I don't know, 63 or 64,000 Bitcoin. And people are questioning whether that was the end of the bull market. And we just started. I mean, this run, it really just started in November of uh, 2023. Well, I would say that that probably means that we're not even close because we have people inside of the ecosystem are still doubting it. When you say, when you hear everyone saying we have fundamentally changed the, you know, the cycle of Bitcoin, Bitcoin could never go down. When I start hearing more and more of that from people who are doubting it at, at this point in time of the cycle, then I'll start to get a bit more worried that our expectations of what, you know, money printed can do for Bitcoin are getting ahead of what will actually happen. But I don't think we're there yet. Culture is the most important thing in humanity, right? We do all this stuff. And at the end of the day, we have free time and we do culture, sports, arts, go to nice restaurants, go to see a play, whatever it is. So when we can bring culture to the blockchain ecosystem, we can onboard the next billion people because that's what they care about. Someone is more likely to go spend a few hours in line to buy a Louis Vuitton bag than they are to learn about financial freedom and use MetaMask. And so if we're able to bring something that people actually care about intrinsically, which is digital art or some other type of culture, and we're able to trade it and experience it natively on a blockchain, then you're going to see orders of magnitude more engagement from those who otherwise wouldn't participate. An example, CryptoKitties broke Ethereum in 2017. Dog with Hat and other meme coins broke Solana in 2024. Ordinals, runes, BRC20, these things are going to fill blocks. They're going to provide transaction fees for miners who now have just lost half their block subsidy. It's going to allay these concerns of what are we going to do when a block subsidy goes away at Bitcoin? Well, humanity's culture is going to be on chain, and that is extremely bullish for the Bitcoin ecosystem. Maelstrom, my fund, we've invested in oil, a Ordinals wallet. And we'll continue to make other investments in this space, as I believe this is the most important thing that we have to get right as a crypto ecosystem. If we can bring culture on chain, then we bring the users.